Okay, should we then start or? We are on. We are on, so we can start. Yes. We have 20 attendees. Okay, yeah, good morning, um, everyone, and welcome to day two of this uh, uh, event on the programs in uh, Romania and uh, Bulgaria. Uh, today we will focus um, on the bilateral uh, ambition and uh, the way to find uh, potential uh, partners, and we will have a interesting uh, matchmaking. But uh, before that, we will have uh, a few uh, interventions from uh, important uh, partners. Um, as those of you that part attended yesterday uh, will know, the, the bilateral uh, ambition uh, is uh, important. Um, it's important objective of the EEA Norway grants to uh, facilitate uh, lasting cooperation between um, entities in the beneficiary states, such as uh, Romania and Bulgaria, and the donor states, uh, Iceland, Liechtenstein, and, and Norway. Uh, but of course, uh, even though it's um, important uh, to, to uh, facilitate the partnerships at the program uh, level, uh, or at the project level, uh, rather, the quality of the projects, uh, that is the most important uh, thing. We actually do not want to see what we sometimes call hostage taking. That would be that uh, entities will just find a partner just to get the few um, additional uh, points. We would like to see project cooperation where also the, the partners from uh, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway contribute in a substantial way into the project. We then competence, uh, technology, and, and, and so on. That is the important uh, thing. The bilateral um, ambition is uh, uh, an additional uh, ambition, but again, the quality of the project idea is the most uh, important uh, thing. So, as I said, the focus today will be the, the matchmaking, um, and hopefully some of you uh, will by the end of the day have some potential uh, partners that you could discuss further with uh, on your project ideas, uh, because uh, it's, it's, it's not the purpose uh, of, the of the matchmaking today to, to then uh, make sure that you have then uh, a fully fledged and uh, completed uh, cooperation, because the meetings today, as you know, they will be, be short, so it's a kind of a first uh, taste uh, and then to see whether it uh, would be uh, useful to continue the discussions on possible uh, project uh, ideas. So, and as uh, most of you then know, probably know, Innovation Norway is the fund operator for uh, two programs in Romania, the business program and the energy program, and we are the fund operator for the business program in Bulgaria. So, and as the, the fund uh, operator, yeah, it is uh, very important to have good partners also at the program uh, level. Uh, and we really have that. We have that uh, uh, partners uh, within the authorities uh, in Romania and Bulgaria, especially, of course, the national focal points uh, established for the uh, Norway grants, but also the cooperation with the relevant uh, ministries, uh, Ministry of, of Energy, Ministry of, of Environment, uh, and so on. This is really important to, to make sure that, uh, that uh, the cooperation, uh, that we have a uh, common understanding of what we would like to achieve uh, within the programs. And, yeah, and in addition to that, we have a good support and cooperation also from the, the ministries of foreign affairs in the donor states. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are often uh, represented by their uh, embassies. And that is a good thing because then uh, we have the close uh, cooperation and close connection uh, with, uh, with uh, them. Uh, and finally, we also then have um, uh, our donor program partners. And we have that, uh, especially then in the energy program in, in Romania, where we have two donor program partners. Uh, and we will now 
hear from yeah. some of our uh, partners, some statements and, and presentations, because they are important partners also as regards uh, facilitating the bilateral uh, partnerships. So uh, I think we will then just uh, dive into the agenda because we will now spend uh, an hour and a half on uh, on uh, presentations uh, from our partners and also get some project examples. And then we will have a, a short break and then we will have the, the, the specific uh, match, matchmaking. Uh, I will then first of all uh, uh, then give the floor to uh, Torst, Mr. Torstein Wangen from the, the Norwegian Embassy in, in Bucharest. So uh, I can't see who uh, is here, but hopefully Torstein, you are with us and then I will see, please. Thank you very much, Magnar. Uh, thank you very much mm -hmm. to all of you. You can all hear me. Very good, yeah. very good. So dear colleagues and dear friends, uh, allow me to start with a big thank you to the organizers of this event. Unfortunately, the ambassador could not attend this meeting, but she conveys her best wishes for a successful seminar. It is still very early in the morning, so I should like to start out with a short story before going into the green economy. In the spring of 1981, that is 40 years ago, <clears throat> I was a Spanish student living in the city of Valencia. And one evening I met, me in my, I met with my neighbor in the elevator and he told me today I talk de queda. My Spanish was not bad, but I hadn't heard that word in the classes before. And the word means curfew. And I guess as of today, this word is introduced in one of the first lessons for any language student worldwide. And I went to my apartment and I turned on the radio and I was told we were not allowed to leave our homes and several restrictions had been imposed on the population. And I thought this was a historical program from the Spanish Civil War 50 years back. It was beyond my imagination that I was witnessing an attempt of a coup d'etat and that the Spanish democracy was in danger. And when we read the news about the events going on in one in China in January last year, it was far beyond our imagination that some months later we had to wear masks, avoid shaking hands and hardly allow to meet friends and family. And when I removed some books from my library a couple of weeks ago, I came across a scientific article from the 1960s about the future of coal as the main energy source. And the article was quite optimistic, stating we could have coal for another 100,000 years. And if coal was a challenge, we had plenty of oil. And what is to be learned from these lessons? First of all, it is about our inclination to look back. Our limited capacity to look ahead and the bad habit of creating conspiracy theories in order to keep the world, the world in order. But it is also about our ability as human beings and societies to realize the facts and to make the necessary corrections. The Spanish democracy survived we have adapted to the restrictions posed on the public due to the COVID-19 and we are here today talking about renewable energies and a green economy. And the use of coal as a preferred energy source is not on the agenda. 
We all know that in the last decades, the world has been facing environmental challenges, including air pollution, reduced water quality and acid rain. The air and water pollution are challenges for our health, in particular for children and the elderly. Climate change is a reality. On the positive side, side, we have noticed that many people have faced the reality and become more responsible. At the same time, they are attracted by greener products and to overcome the environmental issues, individual countries and the EU also strengthened environmental regulations. These regulations and changed consumer behavior have led to a new type of competition in a greener market. Energy is central for any development in industry, food production or job creation. The, renew the renewable energies from wind, sun, water and heat from the earth will represent the future sources of energy. We must acknowledge that we are living in times when green industry and renewable energy make a big difference for countries, the business communities and the people. The need to go green is also recognized as key to competitiveness, productivity and sustainability. Norway is not a member of the Euro European Union but we are almost member of the Euro European Union. We have the economic, the European Economic Area Agreement, the EEA Agreement. And we share a common set of values and the conviction that we need joint solutions to shared challenges. <clears throat> the EEA Agreement makes Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein members of the EU's internal market. And this agreement is about more than just trade and economic relations. It is also about our joint responsibility for Europe's common future and the need to reduce social and economic disparities. One of the most important means to achieve this is through the EEA and Norway grants, which support development in key areas in 15 member states. And in the period 2014 to 2021, the total contribution of Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway to the EEA and Norway grants are 2.8 billion euro. And in this framework, Norway is successfully cooperating with Romania and Bulgaria, covering areas like health, education, justice, home affairs, and of course, the very important areas of green industry, innovation, and renewable energy. Over the last 10 years, the EEA and Norway grants have allocated to these areas over 240 million euro to support initiatives of Romanian and Bulgarian public and private actors, aiming at less carbon intensive energy and cleaner environment, increased security of supply, <clears throat> more competitive and greener local business and sustainable growth. These grants <clears throat> are also to create the context and opportunities for learning, sharing experience and designing common solutions in solid bilateral partnership between authorities, companies or other relevant actors in Romania, Bulgaria and the donor states. And Innovation Norway and the donor project partners have played an important role in facilitating these partnerships to the benefit of the citizens, local communities, the environment and future generation. So I would like to thank you for all the energy, the competence and the enthusiasm you put in this work. Today's matchmaking event is an opportunity for building future partnerships 
which I'm confident will lead to very good initiatives. From the embassy, we are very happy to see Norwegian companies, public authorities and NGOs looking into opportunities both in Romania and Bulgaria. Over the years, we have seen many good partnerships and we are ready to welcome new ones. If a young student in 40 years comes across this two day seminar, he or she will certainly consider the format, the language and the setup old fashioned. But if this seminar, your efforts and your way of communicating the results contribute to an environmental friendly society, you will be considered pioneers. I wish you all lots of energy, inspiration and good luck with your green initiatives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thorstein. Um, as, as always, you have interesting uh, stories uh, to tell and uh, the ability to link what we are doing to, to the history. Uh, and that is uh, important. Uh, uh, I remember as a young man back in the, the 90s, uh, I was involved in the discussions on uh, sustainable uh, development. Uh, I worked in the Ministry of Environment in, in Norway. Uh, and I can see now that the discussion was so different uh, because the discussion was about uh, how to regulate uh, business, not to destroy our, our planet. But you can see now that the business uh, world uh, is kind of in the driver's seat for, for sustainability. So it's a very uh, encouraging uh, development that have taken place. So uh, we, sh we should learn from history, but we should not be a hostage of, of history. That I think is a good, uh, good uh, message. So thank you again. Uh, then we will um, turn to uh, one of the other uh, donor uh, states, that is, uh, is Iceland. And uh, uh, I will welcome uh, the Icelandic ambassador to Romania and uh, Bulgaria, uh, located in, in Copenhagen. Uh, uh, Her Excellency Helga Haugstotir, please Helga. Good morning from Copenhagen. I hope you can all hear me. Yes, perfect. We can. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Magna, for your introduction. Uh, I am Helga Haugstotir, Ambassador of Iceland in Denmark, but I am also accredited to Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, the Embassy of Iceland in Copenhagen is designated as the representative of Iceland for the Joint Committee for the Bilateral Funds for Romania and Bulgaria. And in this capacity, the Embassy observes the operations of the bilateral funds and facilitates cooperation with Icelandic partners in various fields. It is a privilege and pleasure to participate in this event on energy and innovation, green opportunities with the EEA and Norway grants in Romania and Bulgaria. I take this opportunity to thank the government of Romania and Bulgaria for the protective, productive cooperation during this and previous funding periods, during which a number of projects have been implemented with project partners from Iceland. Iceland attaches much importance to the EEA grants funded by Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway. The grants provide an important tool for re reducing social and economic disparity in Europe by supporting projects that foster innovation, environmental sustainability, social inclusion, cultural divers diversity, good governance and vibrant civil society. The bilateral aspect of the EEA grants is also very important for Iceland. The grants offer a unique tool to build and strengthen bilateral relations between the donor and the beneficiary countries. In that regard, Iceland has sought to build cooperation in areas where we have capacity and expertise to offer, such as in areas of geothermal energy, research and innovation, education, culture and gender equality. In order to facilitate further bilateral cooperation, the Foreign Ministry of Iceland has created a database with partnership opportunities in Iceland. This partner database contains concept ideas and examples of best practice projects of possible Icelandic partners in the areas of research, energy, innovation, culture, education and gender equality. Uh, 
You can access this database on the FMO website eeagrants.org under partnership opportunities. The database also includes information on the relevant contact points from the Icelandic donor program partners, namely the Icelandic Energy Authority and the Icelandic Centre for Research and Business Iceland, who I know are more than willing to facilitate your partner search in Iceland. The programmes presented here today fall well within our competence. I would like to address further the opportunities Iceland foresees in these areas with a focus on the open EEA grants funded calls in the fields of geothermal energy and green industry innovation. As can be seen in past cooperation projects within the EEA grants, Iceland enjoys good and successful cooperation with both Romania and Bulgaria on innovation and energy, especially on geothermal energy. As an example, our cooperation in the geothermal energy sector has in recent years been strengthened with many Romanian professionals having attended the postgraduate GRO geothermal training program under the auspices of UNESCO located in Iceland. The Icelandic National Energy Authority has also worked on smaller projects such as pre-feasibility study on geothermal district heating in Oradea and Beus with the aim of evaluating geothermal potential and possibilities in Romania and organizing study visits in cooperation with relevant Romanian authorities. There are also interesting bilateral projects between our countries on the agenda here today, and Harpa Pietersdottir from Iceland will tell us more about our new bilateral project, Women in Energy, between Romania and Iceland. These projects have been successful in preparing for larger investments and future projects that can be funded by the EEA grants. In addition to the geothermal call in Romania, there is also an EEA geothermal call in Bulgaria, and you can get more information on that from the National Energy Authority in Iceland and Business Iceland. Climate change is one of the largest challenges that we face today. Increased use of renewable energy and green industry innovation are key parts of the solution. The use of renewable energy, not the least geothermal energy, for house, house heating can lead to substantial reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. In Iceland, it has created important economic opportunities, improved energy security, reduced greenhouse gas emissions, and reduced Iceland's dependency on fossil fuels. The additional uses, uses and side benefits of geothermal energy have been drivers for innovation and growth in Iceland in areas such as tourism, aquaculture, the health and spa industry, including outdoor swimming pools and hot tubs all year round, and innovations in the cosmetic industry. Dear participants, Iceland enjoys long-standing good relations with both Bulgaria and Romania, and there are many opportunities for cooperation. We consider the EEA grants an important instrument when exploring ways to deepen our bilateral coll collaboration and foster closer ties. The open calls that have now been launched as, as a part of the energy and innovation programs offers opportunities for further cooperation between municipalities, cities, companies and institutions in Romania and Bulgaria in cooperation with companies and institutions in Iceland and Norway. I look forward to hearing more about the important projects that will be presented today. I understand that there are 13 Icelandic participants in today's events and I am pleased that Iceland is so well represented here. I wish you all success with the remaining program today and furthermore I wish you success in implementing the projects and I hope they will further enhance the cooperation between Iceland and Romania and Bulgaria by harnessing green opportunities in the fields of energy and innovation. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, thank you also for uh, pointing out uh, how to find uh, potential uh, Icelandic partners, uh, because that is not always so easy to, to find them, the partners from the donor states. We get a lot of questions uh, from potential applicants where and how to find uh, the partners. We will come back to that also a little bit more uh, later today, but uh, uh, the database on the Icelandic uh, partners uh, is uh, is useful, uh, and I also know that uh, from the Icelandic side that you have uh, strengthened your work on 
on uh, helping potential applicants to find uh, partners. Um, uh, and actually, you could also mention that Innovation Norway, as the fund operator for uh, a number of programs, we have also strengthened our cooperation uh, with Iceland to help uh, facilitating uh, Icelandic uh, partnerships. So, uh, in addition to the to the cooperation with and the, the donor uh, uh, partner we have in the in the energy program, the Icelandic Energy Authority, we also have now a close cooperation with the with the, the research agency on this and also with the, with Business Iceland. So I think uh, the the possibility to find Icelandic partners uh, that uh, has uh, improved a lot uh, lately. So thank you again, uh, Ambassador. Uh, uh, we will then turn to our uh, donor program partner, as it's uh, called. Uh, the role of the donor program partners uh, is uh, first of all to <clears throat> to facilitate the, the bilateral cooperation, yes, but it's also to be the advisor uh, for Innovation Norway in the whole implementation of the program. The donor program partners have been present and actively contributed both to the development of the programs to the development of the call for proposals, uh, the assessment and selection of projects. So they have a, a important and big role in the total implementation of the of the program. So now we will hear both from the, the Norwegian donor program partner and the Icelandic one. And we will start with the, the, the Norwegian Water Resource and Energy Directorate, NVE, and that's Mr. Björn Avli. Please, Björn. Yeah, thank you very much and thank you for the uh, nice introduction, Magnar. Yes, my name is Björn Avle, coming from NVE, the Norwegian Water Resources and Energy Directorate. Now I will try to, to share the screen with you, so see if it's work. It doesn't seem to work very well because I can't see anything. So uh, normally I could see it, but no, I'm not. So uh, I don't know. We can only see you and the nice view behind you. So OK, but you find it now. So uh, yeah, so I have to say change slides and so on, right? Yeah. OK, could you make it a little bit bigger probably? So you are controlling the the uh, the presentation now, right? Yes, Sara is uh, controlling the presentation. Sara is controlling the presentation. Okay, then you can take the next one. Yes, again, thank you very much. Um, yes, I'm coming from NVE, the Norwegian Water Resources and Energy Directorate, and as Magna said, we are one of the the donor program partners in the Romanian energy program. A few words about uh, NVE. Uh, we are an agency, or uh, we call it the Norway Directorate, under the Ministry of Petroleum and Energy. There are about 600 people located in Oslo. Our main office is in the capital Oslo, but we have also have some regional offices around the country. First of all, we are dealing with licenses related to energy and water resources. We are responsible for the whole energy system. Uh, uh, as, as part of this, also the security of supply. Hydrology is important in the NVE because we are a very hydro dependent country. And not to forget to prevent damages from floods, landslides and avalanches. Next, please. Yes, this is the, the map for the EEA and Norway grants. We know that we are three donor uh, countries, Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein, and we have uh, 15 recipient countries. So next, please. So uh, uh, as you already have heard, I think the overall goal for all programs, uh, the objective of the grants is to reduce social and economic disparities and strengthen bilateral relations. Next, please. So. Uh, in the EEA and Norway program portfolio, there are about uh, 100 programs. 
NVE is donor program partner for six programs in the climate, energy and environmental field in Slovakia, Romania, Croatia, Poland, Hungary and Bulgaria. Next please. So what is the main goals for the programs on energy? Yeah, it's less carbon intensive energy, of course. Renewable energy is, is one uh, answer on that. New plants based on renewable energy, hydro, geothermal and other renewables. Next, please. So, but, but also to some extent in the Romanian program, for instance, electrification and off-grid solutions based on renewable energy. Electromobility is an important issue all over Europe, but re uh, in uh, regards to the, the climate, it needs to be charged from renewable energy. Next, please. The other part of the answer is energy efficiency. There is a huge uh, potential to make more efficient energy solutions in the building sector, in the construction sector, in the industry, etc. So next, please. And also energy from waste has been and also going to be an even more important uh, part of the solution, waste incineration and recovery of heat. To get away with uh, the waste, but at the same time produce and generate electricity or heat and heat. Next, please. So the energy program in Romania, there are five remaining calls. You have heard about that already, I think. So they are all ongoing. Yes, next please. In Bulgaria, there are four remaining calls in the energy program that are still ongoing. Uh, application deadlines mostly in September and uh, also a little bit later in the autumn. Next please. So why EIA project want partnerships with Norwegian companies or entities? Next please. Well, first of all, to raise the quality of the project. And partnerships get extra, give extra points in the evaluation. And also to let, think a little bit broader, to contribute to the development of bilateral relations between donor and recipient countries. Next please. So what do we mean by, by uh, bilateral relations? One way is to deal with that is to, to divide it in three parts. On the strategic level, for instance, we are thinking about more big events, big conferences. As we had once in, uh, in Bucharest, for instance, with political participants, and there could be some topics to discuss on common interest. And at program level, when we are normally operating, there we could arrange and having seminars, workshops for current issues that are common to the, the two countries to the, discuss. At project level, which is most, uh, that is most important today with the matchmaking event, is to get partnerships between project promoters and partners from the recipient, uh, applicants from the recipient countries. So next please. So some words about criteria for participating as a project partner. Next, please. Yeah, as you know, I think you know, applicants for projects must come from the recipient countries. But we try to promote to get entities from Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein to be partners. Partners can uh, come from all groups, from the public sector, private sector, from NGOs or research environments. And when you have partnerships, they have to discuss the tasks and the budget between the two parties. Next, please. Uh, a little bit about opportunities and limitations. Next, please. What is the motivation to be a partner? We know from experience from the previous periods that training competence building for the organization in all kinds of organization, private entities and public entities is important. 
And some companies also thinking about, about the market expansion. It could be the first step for later potential ownership interests, for instance, in the renewable energy and uh, to be a service provider later in that in this uh, country. Next, please. Uh, some project limitations. As we have seen in the field of, uh, or in the area of the energy and climate programs, it will often be advisory services from the, uh, from the Norwegian and from the donor side. Pure deliveries, goods, and standardized services must be advertised and be part of the procurement pro pro uh, procedures in the countries. But there are different models of cost coverage. We do not call it profit. We don't like the word profit, but we like to have different models for cost coverage. Next, please. How to establish contact between a potential applicants in the recipient country and a partner from the donor countries. Next, please. Yeah, it can happen in different ways. First is to, you can receive a request from a potential applicant in the recipient country uh, and potential donor partners contact relevant applicants in the recipient country. Donor program partners as NVE facilitate is one of our, uh, yeah, it's, it's one important part of our, our uh, responsibilities as donor program partner to facilitate contact between uh, potential applicants and potential partners. Networking, matchmaking, information events as uh, today. And of course, we see also some continuation of partnerships from the previous period. Next, please. So, a way to find the open calls published. It has been mentioned from Innovation Norway already on the program operators' websites. In this case, you can go to Innovation Norway and find all the programs. And we also see that is a very good and well-developed website at the FMO, the Financial Mechanism Office in Brussels, where you can see all calls that is open, all calls that is ongoing. Uh, you can see the, the link there. It's very simple to go in to find out if there are some interesting calls. And if you also want to be signed up for newsletters directly to your inbox, it's also possible from that website. Next, please. So that was uh, all from my side. I think I've used my 10 minutes, so thank you for your attention. And uh, thank you very much uh, for um, listening to me and good luck with uh, matchmaking today. Thank you very much. Magnar, you are muted. You are muted, Ragnar. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Thank you, thank you, uh, Bjorn, and thank you for uh, pointing out also that uh, uh, the program is not only about uh, cooperation at the project uh, level. The EEA Norway grant uh, programs can also be uh, a platform for uh, more strategic uh, discussions uh, of, of different uh, aspects. Uh, so that is uh, important because we know that uh, the energy sector will be extremely important uh, in the years to come also for achieving the ambitions of the European Union as regards Green Deal and so on. We touched a little bit upon that uh, yesterday, but the importance of the energy sector will not be less than uh, than before. It will be, will be even, even more. And then as regards then also using the, the, the program for uh, other types of uh, initiative uh, that will now be illustrated uh, by the Icelandic donor uh, program partner, the National Energy Authority of Iceland, Orkus Tofnun. Uh, and because there, Harpa uh, Petersdottir will talk about uh, the bilateral initiative on women in energy and also then uh, more bilateral cooperation in, uh, in large. So please, Harpa. Uh, Hello guys, good morning. I hope you can hear me good. Sorry for my tardiness, but um, it so happens that here in Iceland uh, it's only 8.40, so I had to put my kids to school and it's a, it's a busy morning, so I just uh, joined you now and I hope I didn't miss 
well, I know I did miss a lot, but uh, I hope I will make up for it. Sorry, I think I'm putting the wrong slide there. Let me see. Like this. And then it's always a little bit difficult to begin with. I hope it's okay. Can you see it now? Can yes. You see my okay, good. <clears throat> so let me introduce myself. My name is Harpa Pietisdóttir. I am the legal advisor for the National Energy Authority in Iceland, Orkustofnun. Uh, just to give you a very short uh, introduction on the National Energy Authority, uh, it is a, a, a public authority under the auspices of the Ministry of Energy here in Iceland. And uh, what we are mainly dealing with on a daily basis is uh, licensing of uh, um, anything that has to do with uh, exploration and exploitation of natural resources. Uh, we also monitor the utilization of natural resources here in Iceland and, and electricity production, uh, and also advise uh, the uh, government on energy matters. This is of course just among the many things that uh, we do uh, here in Iceland at Orkustofnun. But, uh, <clears throat> Uh, I have been working with the EEA grants for a few years now and have quite the positive experience, which is a good thing, especially in Romania and in Poland. But uh, we here at Orkustofnen, we think that... I don't know, this is... Are you always seeing the same slide? Okay, so what I wanted to say is that, <clears throat> as uh, Björn said uh, before, the National Energy Authority of Iceland is uh, a donor project partner uh, within the energy program as regards to Romania, among other countries. And the cooperation aims at uh, less utilization of, of uh, carbon intensive energy and increased security of supply. Now, a uh, part of the funds are directed towards bilateral cooperation within the program, building on knowledge sharing and um, mutual competences within the energy field. And in this context, Women in Energy as an association saw the possibility for knowledge sharing and gaining from our experiences. And as we had also been acquainted with some women from the energy sector in Romania, it was a golden opportunity to strengthen the relations between the countries and try to create something new. Now, here in Iceland, we do have quite some experience with uh, renewable energy, as you probably are aware of. And, and at the same time, we are uh, among the front runners as regards uh, equality, gender equality matters. So we thought, why not combine the two? Now, the bilateral cooperation, as I said, builds on the knowledge sharing and, and, and mutual competences within the countries in this uh, context uh, as regards the energy field. And well, as I said, we, I think I'm missing a slide. Well, what I wanted to say was basically that we, we really encourage the uh, cooperation between the countries. We see that this is only a positive uh, way to strengthen the know-how in, in both countries. And, and we think that, of course, you don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, in each country, everyone in their corner. So, this cooperation is a fantastic opportunity and, and we think it's uh, highly important in our work. So we have encouraged our, uh, the entities in Iceland to, to uh, show this uh, initiative some interest. 
But why am I talking about women and energy? Well, it so happens that I am also the founder and the chairman of the board of this association called Women and Energy Iceland. Uh, it's uh, five years old now as of this year, January. And just to give you a short input on, on how and why we are. Well, it was uh, in 2014 that uh, I was participating in a triannual uh, conference in Iceland uh, for the, which is held by the Federation of Energy and Utility Companies. And it really struck me at the conf uh, conference that uh, there was really lack of women in the conference. It's around 400, 500 people uh, every three years. And I saw that very clearly that the part of women there was maybe maybe 10 percent, if not less, which was a little bit shocking for me. I was only 30, 33 years old or something. And, and for me, this was a new reality. Um, what was probably most striking was the fact that there was uh, this is held in the north of Iceland, so everyone takes two days off to, to visit this uh, part of the country and a lot of people take their spouses with. The Federation had planned a spouses trip, which was actually called the ladies trip and it was to uh, the Museum of Handicraft in, in the area. I thought for myself and my husband, I'm not very sure he would be interested in taking part in the ladies trip. So this, all of this building up to something uh, which led to the fact that on the way back to, to the capital, this idea struck uh, to found Women in Energy as an association and try to see if we could have some impact. <coughs> it started as a Facebook page in 2014. In 2015, I, I summoned five women that I knew from the uh, from the sector and we had our first meeting. It was then in 2016 that the National Power Company in Iceland, we contacted them and they offered us to have this first meeting. And it was supposed to be at their headquarters and we thought maybe 30, 40 women would be there, probably all of which we already knew. We put the event on Facebook and what happens is that 300 women said going or interested. So we had to move the meeting to the biggest conference hall in Iceland, Harpan, and we had a 200 people meeting, the first meeting. This was in 2016. So this, only to tell you, we had no idea, firstly, that there were this many women working within the energy sector in Iceland, and also it proved to us that what we really needed to do was to highlight these women. They were obviously in the back and not in the spotlight as they probably many of them should be. So that, this is the story behind the association. Now we have five years of experience and, and we have done a lot of work, which I will not go into here, but a really fun, fantastic uh, association of almost 400 people today. So this is the ob objective of, of Women in Energy Iceland, and that's to empower women in energy, to strengthen the connection between them, and to encourage women to seek education related to energy matters. We want to put them also in the focus. Uh, we are open to this is an old slide, not both genders, but all genders, as we think that uh, it's of a common interest of us all to reach our goal, to have as a diverse sector of energy as possible. Uh, going to the objective of the project that we are talking about here today, well, the promoter of, of the project is Orkustopnun and the partner uh, in Romania, main partner is the Romanian Energy Regulatory Authority or ANRE and the main objective of this initiative is to empower women with uh, working within the energy sector in Romania by sharing 
experience and knowledge from the founding of this association here in Iceland. So the ultimate goal, the plan of this project is to, in the end, establish a similar, or a similar organization in Romania, but based on the Icelandic models and, of course, learning from um, our experience. <clears throat> Uh, as with the Icelandic Association, the objective of this Romanian association to be founded would be to empower women within the energy sector, to increase the participation of women in the sector, connect them better, draw women towards the energy sector. So a similar objective, uh, but has yet to be, uh, to be written down as a mission. So that's what is to come. Now, other objectives of the proposed initiatives, uh, in, initiative is uh, to strengthen the bilateral relations between the, key, key, sorry, between the two key national institutions uh, in the energy sector and also the countries themselves, to build up a strong network and lasting relationships with, between the Romanian and Icelandic women working within the uh, energy sector, uh, to to discuss the working environment of women in the energy sector. This is my dog outside barking at me, wants to, to be let in, try not to, to focus on that so much. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, as I have said, to, to share the best practices regarding how to attract girls and women to energy related studies and open their eyes uh, towards the energy sector, which is a fantastic place to work at. Uh, but is stamped to be a very male dominant sector. Also to foster career and leadership development of work who are already working within the energy sector and to lift them up. And lastly, to transfer know-how and experience of utilization of renewable energy sources such as hydropower and geothermal. This is a side objective. So how are we going to implement the project? Uh, firstly, to establish, uh, to set up two virtual workshops, which we uh, in our association here in Iceland have been uh, organizing. Uh, this was of course in the beginning supposed to be um, a real meetings, workshops in Iceland and Romania, but as it happens, we have a, a, a pandemic going on. So we have uh, adapted to that and we have already held our first workshop, which was held on, on the 15th of March. Two hour workshop with 15 women, fantastic, talking about uh, the way forward. Uh, the next step <clears throat> after our second workshop would be, hopefully, if uh, everything goes as planned, a visit of eight women from Romania to Iceland to have a workshop here in Iceland prepared by us. Uh, in order to work on the ways forward and, and for the Romanian team to present what they have then already uh, prepared. And then lastly, a uh, kickoff meeting in Bucharest where uh, the Icelandic team and the Romanian team will meet and, and prepare this uh, kickoff and the uh, Romanian association will formally be established. Our vision is that five women from our side would be participating and we would try to put this up uh, side by side with an uh, energy event already taking place in Romania. Now, to end this, I, I show you here a picture taken at the um, uh, house of Georgiana Pogonaro, who was the, uh, uh, our uh, contact in, in Bu Bucharest. Uh, she's actually, I'm trying, not the ambassador, but uh, it will come to me, but uh, she has facilitated uh, already a few years back uh, a meeting with Icelandic and Romanian women in the energy sector. So the plant was, uh, you know, the seed was planted already a few years ago. But we have uh, felt that there is quite some interest in the project and we are very positive going forward, hoping that this will be a success. So thank you. And thank you guys for a fantastic uh, matchmaking event. Thank you, Harpa. And uh, thank you for uh, 
giving us a good example of how to combine different objectives of the EEA Norway grants, because both energy and gender equality uh, are among the important objectives. So we will follow this uh, project uh, closely and we will be eager to hear more about the progress uh, uh, further on. Uh, and also, sorry for starting so uh, uh, early. Uh, it's a challenge to have a morning uh, session uh, with then participation from three different uh, time zones. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, you Icelanders will always then lose out and have to be the early birds when we have a, a morning uh, session. So I hope that uh, it was not too stressful uh, morning for, for all of you participating from, uh, from Iceland. So uh, thank you uh, uh, very much. Uh, and now we will... Uh, get some projects examples because that is uh, although that that is uh, the core of the uh, of this to, to finance projects so we will try to give you some inspiration by uh, giving you information about some projects um, under implementation or implemented and I will give to lead you through this I will give the floor to uh, my colleague in in Bucharest Gabriela please Gabriela the floor is yours thank you Magnar uh, good morning and uh, thank you for attending our energy and innovation digital event. My name is Gabriela Constantin and I am program officer at Innovation Norway Bucharest office. I am pleased to present you bilateral cooperation on green opportunities with the EA and Norway grants. Uh, the partnership between entities in the donor countries on the one side and entities in the beneficiary countries on the other side are an important part of the EEA and Norway grants programs. The EEA and Norway grants have various databases that allow you to register and search for potential partners. A good place to start identifying a project partner is to use the resources, including in our website. You may find a link here. The EEA and Norway grants uh, are also having their own database in the form of a public Excel file. These files include the information submitted by companies interested in finding a project partner for the EA and Norway grant. If you submit your company information and your partnership proposal in the form uh, on our website, the information will then be made available to the public on the Excel file shared on the website. You can also find companies which have already registered in that file. Please also note that the submission and publication of the proposal happen upon request of the submitting party and the later is uh, responsible for the content. So please visit our website for more information. Uh, regarding the donor partnership on our next slide, we will see that the the donor partnership are strongly encouraged and will be awarded on extra points during the project assessment process. The bilateral re uh, relations can bring unique uh, bilateral partnership opportunities, access to expertise, technologies and solutions from donor states entities, Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein. The applicant is the driver force uh, and uh, submits the project application, signs the financing contract with Innovation Norway, submits interim and final reports. Uh, Sara, can you please help uh, with uh, moving the site? Yeah, thank you very much. The division of roles is in the partnership agreement. Uh, what is important to say here that um, uh, please pay attention to the partnership quality. This uh, is very important to be mentioned. The partnership agreement should include clear division of roles, task responsibilities and cash flow, assessment of partners uh, involvement in the preparation, implementation and sharing the project results. Each partner has a significant contribution to the project activities. And now we have the pleasure to present the project example under implementation financed by EEA and Norway grants and managed by Innovation Norway under the umbrella of energy program. Welcome and thank you to our project promoter and partner for participation in uh, this digital event. 
from Sfântul Gheorghe Municipality, together with a Norwegian partner, Esfert University College, we will show you a good project example under implementation with bilateral partnerships. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. I wish you success for the matchmaking event and uh, to submit good project application with partners. I will leave the floor to Mrs. Sila Mike from Svantu Gheorghe Municipality and then to the Norwegian partner, Mr. Mihet from Houston to highlight the bilateral cooperation on green opportunities. Mrs. Sila, if you hear us. Hello. OK, then uh, uh, we will go to Mr. Mihat and maybe then the connection will be fixed with uh, Mrs. Sila too. Please, Mr. Mihat, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Gabriela, for your invitation. Thank you, uh, Innovation Norway. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here. Sorry for this noise with a lot of uh, messages. Um, can you please move to, to the next slide? Because uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, what I prepare for you today, uh, actually, this is uh, uh, my suggestion for um, uh, my presentation. Uh, I uh, I will focus on uh, uh, bilateral cooperation on green opportunities, as was uh, suggested uh, before. And uh, I would like to, to highlight actually uh, three points here. Um, first one is connected with uh, um, actually uh, my experience here um, in these projects, uh, uh, EA and Norway grants. Uh, the second point is connected with um, um, our facilities, uh, uh, intelligent control of energy conversion and storage uh, systems, uh, research groups and uh, uh, lab facilities as well. And then I will uh, uh, mention something about our master program uh, called Green Energy Technology, which is uh, also connected with uh, this, uh, um, these projects and uh, uh, my experience. OK, so um, can you can you change? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, first of all, uh, um, I um, would like to uh, to say something about me. I'm a, a project uh, um, uh, manager in this uh, in, in, in the three projects connected with uh, uh, this kind of calls. I'm professor in energy technology at Oswald University College since uh, 2016. I moved to Norway five years ago. Uh, previously, I was working in Denmark five years as well. Um, so uh, uh, let me to, um, to say something about our um, the university college. Uh, actually, um, it is located in two different uh, two different towns, um, Fredrikstad and Halden. We uh, have six faculties, uh, which is going to uh, to be changed uh, beginning with August. Uh, uh, we decided to merge together actually to um, to have only three faculties, but stronger. Um, here we we have 25 uh, bachelor programs, uh, 15 master programs, and uh, uh, around uh, 7,000 students and uh, 700 uh, uh, staff members. Related to um, our uh, research group, uh, here I uh, uh, I would like to mention only uh, this uh, this parts connected with uh, uh, with my work and my research. Uh, uh, that's why. Um, I will mention only energy technologies, smart grids, uh, integration, renewable energy sources, uh, energy efficiency, uh, including here storage systems, electric vehicles, uh, which was also mentioned before uh, as one of um, the most important uh, uh, challenge for the future, and not only. Uh, also, we have some experience uh, uh, in artificial intelligence, uh, uh, big data analysis, machine learning. Uh, this part uh, actually um, is also coming from, um, uh, from my experience with uh, um, 
Um, actually, last year I was invited by European uh, uh, Union uh, and the uh, European Parliament uh, uh, to be chairman of uh, Artificial Intelligence for People uh, in Brussels. So um, I uh, uh, recognize that I'm a little bit uh, uh, inspired by uh, European Commission and uh, uh, European uh, Union here. Um, can you please move a little bit farther? OK, thank you very much. Uh, related to um, uh, the projects connected with EEA and uh, Norway grants. Uh, we have submitted uh, uh, in the last uh, three years actually six project proposals. Uh, um, three of them uh, were granted. Uh, I uh, mentioned here only uh, the winning uh, uh, projects, of course. Uh, the first one is uh, um, this project, uh, which uh, Gabriela already mentioned here. Um, it is um, uh, the partnership between uh, uh, Svento Georgia Municipality and uh, uh, Oswald University College. Uh, we um, actually got uh, uh, 1 uh, million 800 thousand euros. Uh, the total uh, eligible budget was uh, a little bit uh, higher. Um, the second project in which uh, uh, I'm involved and uh, actually uh, we uh, we got uh, uh, last year uh, two projects. Uh, the second project is uh, um, they are connected uh, uh, actually with a small medium entity in Romania, um, which is the project uh, promoter uh, Amiras. And uh, uh, in this project, we have uh, uh, two Norwegian partners. Uh, actually, one of them is uh, um, one of my favorite Norwegian partner. Uh, we have been working together for five years. Actually, uh, we submitted uh, many project proposals together and um, uh, we have uh, uh, many, many things in common with uh, uh, Next Tech and uh, yes, Oswald uh, University College also yes, as uh, the first um, uh, Norwegian partner here. So we, we got a budget of uh, uh, more than uh, 300,000 uh, euros um, and uh, um, actually uh, these projects are connected uh, with uh, the energy program, uh, focused area renewable energy, and the call was energy uh, efficiency. So uh, uh, we will uh, uh, focus on um, energy efficiency. Uh, we would like to, um, to design and to develop uh, uh, some solutions for uh, energy efficiency in uh, uh, different type of buildings in Romania. And then based on our uh, design development, we uh, will move to Romania uh, to implement these, uh, uh, these solutions uh, uh, into uh, the building energy management systems. Can you move it please a little bit? My slide. Yes, thank you. Um, I uh, uh, related to, to partners role. Uh, actually, our contribution to uh, to this project, um, uh, as I mentioned before, it is connected with research and development. Uh, we will uh, uh, develop uh, uh, some simulation models uh, uh, based on uh, different type of uh, algorithms and tools here. I uh, uh, already mentioned artificial intelligence, but also uh, machine learning. Uh, after that, uh, uh, we will uh, uh, test uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, algorithms, this uh, the simulation tools into our labs uh, based on uh, a communication platform. And then we'll uh, we'll move to uh, to real life, uh, let's say, to validate these uh, specific tools uh, for um, control and monitoring of different uh, uh, type of uh, of buildings. We are also involved in uh, dissemination and uh, exploitation of the research results. Uh, uh, we uh, we have some uh, some experience here. And uh, as uh, Bjorn mentioned before, this uh, uh, bilateral cooperation actually uh, is uh, including um, some some levels. Uh, one of them is connected with um, uh, uh, the conferences. We uh, will organize uh, uh, some workshops and we'll present uh, our paper papers uh, uh, to uh, some specific uh, uh, dedicated conferences, I would say. Uh, also, uh, uh, the program level and project level uh, will be um, included here in, uh, uh, in this part with uh, dissemination and uh, uh, exploitation. So uh, uh, conference and networking uh, will be uh, our uh, responsibility in, uh, 
in this uh, in these projects. Can you move it a little bit? OK, thank you very much. Uh, here in this slide, I uh, I wanted to, to highlight um, uh, the partners uh, uh, which uh, uh, actually we have uh, in, in this uh, um, last uh, three years and uh, uh, projects. Um, as you can see, uh, we are working with uh, um, two municipalities in Romania. The, um, placed uh, in uh, in west of Romania so uh, um, harp I suggest you to to visit also uh, west of Romania not only Bucharest uh, uh, they are very, very smart uh, women in uh, in this part as well um, so uh, we are working with uh, uh, two municipalities of uh, um, one of them is uh, uh, one of uh, the biggest in Romania. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, three partners coming from industry, um, small, medium entity. Uh, I already mentioned Amiras, uh, Servalect from um, uh, Cluj-Napoca and another small uh, entity coming from east of Romania. So we are uh, we have uh, connections uh, uh, all over uh, Romania, I would say. Uh, also, um, I have some um, some colleagues in Romania uh, working with different universities. I spent 15 years actually in Romania working with uh, a technical university in west of Romania, and uh, uh, I uh, already have some um, uh, good connections here. I would say, and uh, um, just a few of these uh, universities are highlighted here. Technical University of Cluj is one of uh, our uh, best partner, I would say, from Romania. Uh, Polytechnical University, where I was before. Uh, Technical University of Yash, which, uh, um, yes, we were extremely close to get uh, another project. We were very, very close, actually, just a few. Um, yeah, uh, we got certain points and uh, uh, the last project which was accepted was certain point setting dot two so you can imagine yes we were extremely close to uh, to get to one more research project okay can you can you please move to to the next uh, slide okay thank you thank you very much uh, the, here i uh, uh, i wanted to highlight um, um, just a few of uh, facilities connected with uh, um, what i um, i was able to do in in these five years at oswald university college actually um, uh, I uh, developed a research lab. Uh, this uh, uh, research lab is uh, uh, is called uh, Intelligent Control of Energy Conversion and Storage Systems, and together or around this uh, this lab, which uh, uh, more or less is connected with our master program in green energy technology, um, I try to to build uh, a team around uh, this international team because I have many partners from uh, the. Norway, uh, Denmark, Sweden, uh, Finland, Germany, Italy, Spain, Greece and Romania. So we uh, actually we are kind of uh, international team um, designed if you like around this uh, uh, intelligent control of energy uh, conversion and storage system uh, research research lab. Uh, you can find more uh, details uh, if you would like to about uh, uh, our um, research team and also about our uh, research lab here just uh, um, a few things uh, um, uh, they are based on uh, different setups connected with renewable energy storage systems uh, renewable energy and storage systems i i would say but also with power electronics uh, uh, electric vehicles and um, smart grids so uh, um, the master program uh, just one uh, sentence to mention here um, six students uh, from Romania, uh, Italy and Spain already came to my office, uh, came to my lab, uh, research lab uh, uh, for six months. Uh, actually, uh, they spent six months in my lab, uh, all these uh, six students uh, and um, they attended some of my courses, but also uh, they uh, um, designed and developed uh, their uh, dissertation and uh, their bachelor thesis in my lab. Um, just a little bit further, please. Um, OK, uh, uh, some details about uh, uh, the setups and trainers. I, I uh, don't want to insist too much here. Uh, so we, we try to, um, to develop uh, um, this kind of uh, setups, which in, uh, 
uh, are based on smart grids, but uh, we can use different components here to, to connect these uh, renewables, to connect these um, electric drives, uh, to connect these power electronic uh, uh, converters together, such as to, to get uh, a uh, uh, microgrid, uh, which is part of uh, my research lab. Just a little bit farther, please. OK, uh, uh, here you can find uh, two of uh, our research uh, centers. Uh, this is uh, located in Halden. It is based on real uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, we have here uh, some uh, PV panels on the roof. We also have some uh, some batteries connected together to, um, yeah, to, to build a kind of hybrid uh, microgrid. But also we have some, uh, um, some labs uh, facilities here in, uh, in Halden and a real-time uh, platform which can be accessed. Uh, can, uh, uh, you can monitor the components, you can see the, the production, you can see the consumption uh, in the same time. Yes, next uh, next slide, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is my last, uh, my last slide. Uh, I uh, would like to um, just to, to, to mention the next steps and, uh, and calls uh, uh, regarding this uh, bilateral cooperation. Uh, we uh, would like to, to apply for, um, yeah, we, we are trying to, to design, to develop a new project proposal uh, together with our partners uh, from Romania. We are actually interested in, uh, uh, in this call, other uh, renewable energy sources, uh, which uh, has a deadline uh, in September. So uh, uh, this is uh, actually our uh, goal, uh, connected um, with this uh, bilateral uh, cooperation. OK, this is uh, this is all for uh, from my side. Um, Gabriela, if you want to take the stage. Thank you very much for the presentation, Mr. Mihat. Um, <clears throat> let's see if uh, the Romanian uh, project promoter can say a few words. Uh, Mrs. Sila Mike is here also. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, uh, you should uh, unmute yourself. No, OK, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, for participating to our meeting. Uh, I will leave the floor to Magnar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's, it's always interesting to hear about uh, specific uh, projects because, as I said, uh, that is what this is uh, all about. Uh, we are now more or less exactly on schedule, so uh, I'm impressed by the discipline of the, the presentations, presentators. That's that's really good. Uh, so it's my then uh, task to wrap this uh, up, and uh, and then um, we will soon have the matchmaking. But I will then to wrap this up. I will just show you a little bit. Uh, I will show you two or three slides. Uh, can you see it now? Can anyone confirm that you can see this? Uh, yes, we can. Yes. yes, you can. Good. We have already touched up on how to find uh, possible partners. Both the donor program partners uh, did that and also Gabriela. Uh, so I will then just to wrap up, of course, as already said, the bilateral ambition is, is strong. Uh, we are, as you all know, in, in difficult uh, times. Uh, normally, uh, this event would probably have been a physical uh, event, but that is, uh, for uh, natural reasons, not, not uh, possible for the time being. So we have uh, had a lot of uh, online events to try to uh, to replace them the, the normal uh, type of, of, uh, of matchmaking. So we have been looking at alternative ways of, of doing this. So hopefully this will work also uh, today because the tools uh, are available and and uh, the digital first is the the the, the approach. So, but uh, the partner search uh, continues. Uh, we have already mentioned some of the the tools. Uh, for instance, that is possible to go also to the homepage of Innovation Norway to find the. Uh, a list of uh, potential both partners and applicants that have registered uh, at that uh, list. 
but I would also like to, to mention to you that uh, that are, who are looking for a Norwegian partner that uh, we have the Explorer. Uh, that is the official Norwegian uh, marketplace for green technology exports. So it promotes uh, Norwegian companies and, and then try to facilitate the connection uh, uh, between them and international uh, partners. So this is also a, a useful uh, tool uh, for uh, uh, project promoters looking for, for Norwegian partners. Uh, this is a platform that uh, uh, was uh, launched now a couple of years ago. Uh, it was launched by the Norwegian uh, Prime Minister and she labeled it, labeled it as a kind of uh, Tinder for businesses. Uh, but fortunately, the, the profiles uh, uh, at uh, the Explorer, uh, they are more vetted than the, the profile on the, on the, the regular uh, Tinder. So it's possible then to do searches within uh, 10, 11 uh, different uh, sectors, and then you will, if you do that, you will come up with uh, companies uh, with them different uh, solutions uh, related to, to what's green. And the good thing is that uh, the companies that you will find at the Explorer, they are then willing, able and ready to take part in international uh, cooperation. So if you find a match at the Explorer, it's a good chance that the, the company uh, could at least be interested uh, in in discussions uh, with you. Uh, so, and if you find a match at the Explorer, you will then ha just have to make a simple registration, and then you will get access to the contact details uh, to that uh, to that company. So, I will just uh, encourage you to to use then the different uh, tools available, and and the tool we will then uh, focus on this afternoon is of course. Uh, is of course the, the uh, matchmaking uh, that will now take place. And I don't know, Sara, if uh, you would like to say a few words about the practical uh, details around uh, the matchmaking before we close this session. I can say a few words about that. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> the most important thing for you to remember is that we sent out an email yesterday with all relevant information. And if you have any any questions at all, just send us a message and we'll help you as good as we can. And it will happen on the B2Match platform. So yeah, that's the most important things for you to remember. And good luck to everyone. Good, so then we will have uh, around uh, half an hour to, to prepare uh, for the matchmaking. So I then only wish all of you the, the, the best of luck and, and hopefully at least some of you will uh, uh, have some potential partners to, to discuss further with uh, then uh, by the end of uh, the day today. Thank you uh, all of you for, for uh, participating in, in this and again best of luck. Thank you.